today we're going to be talking about the different data types that are in Adalo. Data types are the different kinds of values that can be stored in a database column, in other words, a property. They define the type of information that is accepted into each property. It also can control what is selected inside of a form as a type of validation. Before we begin going over the different data types, let's talk about how I've set up my Adalo Builder. I have my mobile screen here. I've added a button for a new data type with an action over to a different screen. And I've added a simple list. Here is where I'm going to demonstrate how each of the values or data types show up inside of an end app. I also added a collection to my database called data type. And inside this collection, I have added a property for each one of the data types that we are going to be talking about today. To add a property, you go ahead and you click Add Property down here. You select your data type of what information you want to be accepted within this column. And then once you've done so, you can go ahead and rename those. So if you want to set up your app to look just like mine, you can go ahead and add each one of our properties and for simplicity's sake, add, named them each one of the data types. So today we're going to be talking about text, numbers, our true and false property, date and time, date, image, and file. We do have more property types, location and our relationship properties, one to many, many to one, and many to many. But I'm not going to be talking about those in this video because those will get its own video in much longer form. In order to see the data that's inside each one of these properties, you can go ahead and click inside the collection here with our records and then see how they're going to show up. So you have very specific formats for the dates and times. Here's what an image file is going to look like, what an actual image will look like, and true and false property, the numbers, etc. All right, let's begin talking about each one of the data types. First, we've got our text data type. This data type contains alphanumeric information and accepts text, numbers, and symbols. There isn't anything particularly unique about this property and there are no manipulations you can make of the text from the database into your app. To explain, when we see this simple list, we go ahead and we use magic text to pull our text from the database into this list. To set this up initially, we can go ahead and delete that text. We use our magic text selector we use current data type and we select text. To see how we can format our text differently, you would be able to normally see some sort of manipulation that can be done here, but since there isn't anything, it's important to know that we don't give the option to put everything into uppercase, to put everything into lowercase, uh, to do camel casing or anything like that. You will have to add your text numbers and symbols into your database as you want them to appear in your app. Next, we have our number property data type. This data type accepts integers, both positive and negative, and decimals. In the database, you cannot place a thousandth separator, and instead that gets changed when you display the information inside your app. To look at what I'm talking about here, you can see this sample text record has 42,000 here. And if I go ahead and I try and change that inside the database here, let's say I actually want this to be able to be read better. Go ahead and add my thousandth separator, click save, and you can see that it's no longer there. So in the database, your numbers are going to be kind of in plain text here. And the way that you manipulate your numbers later for where your users are going to see them is actually inside of your magic text. So again, here inside the subtitle, I have my numbers. And if I wanted to, I can change the number format from our default format. Our default format is going to show 
commas. I can choose that I don't want to show any commas. I can abbreviate the numbers. I can change the numbers into currency and I can do a currency abbreviated. I can go ahead and I can change the prefix and suffix here and that just basically means that I don't have to type anything in this text and Adala will do all the work for me and add the appropriate prefix and suffix to my number information. To view this inside of an app, you can go ahead and I'm going to refresh here and you'll see that my dollar sign is appearing before my numbers and my US dollars abbreviation is here afterwards. Another thing about our number data type is it's possible to use them inside custom formulas. Next, let's talk about our true false property. For anyone who's ever looked into coding before, this property is a Boolean and represents a binary. For those of us who have never looked into coding, the true-false property represents something that can be either one thing or the other thing. So there's only two options and your record must be one or the other. For example, you can either be an administrator of an app or not. You can either be on or off. You can either be logged in or logged out. You can have seen the message or not. All of these are examples of when it would be appropriate to use the true false property. Typically, when I set up properties in my database, I like to label the property with a question. For example, is an admin, is on, is logged in, seen message, that helps my brain recognize what is true and what is false. To show you how this is set up inside the database and how you can view this information, here when you look at all records, you'll see that there's a checkbox next to the things that are true and nothing next to something that is false. If you click inside the record, you're going to go ahead and see that it is two different button options, true and false here. Inside the user's collection, you can imagine that this is the question I am asking. Is an organizer? Caitlin, myself, is not an organizer and therefore this property is reflected as false. True false properties are typically used inside conditional actions, conditional visibility, and there are a couple of other different scenarios where you may find them useful. However, this is not something that you display inside any of these magic text properties. Next, we have the date and time property. The date and time data type allows you to store both a date and a time. The default time is 12 a.m. on the day that is selected from the calendar, and the default display date data is relative, meaning 10 days ago or something like that. Let's go ahead and look at what this actually means in a real app. Here, we've got different dates and times in this column. Let's go ahead and add our date and time property to this magic text option. Great. Now, when we head over to the real life app, go ahead and refresh. We can see that this date is appearing in relative format. So in two days, in a day, and this happened 10 hours ago. To change the way that that data is formatted, we can come back here to the magic text field and we can select our date format. As you can see, there are many options for how to format your date and your time. This is a perfect example of why it's important to use the right data type inside of your collections. For example, you can easily type inside of a text field a date and a time because it accepts numbers and letters. However, if you don't use this property, you don't have the option to format this information in all of these various different ways, and instead you'll have to parse that differently. Another thing to know about the date and time property is that it can be used in custom formulas. So you can calculate the time in between two events. Next, let's look at our date property. Our date property shows a date and functionally works the same as the date and time property, but it doesn't have the time information. When talking about the date and time property and the date property as well, 
It's important to be able to validate the information that's being input and to demonstrate why this is important, I've gone ahead and made a screen with a form on it. I've only chosen two different fields for my form, but let's look up at this in a real live app. I click on new data type and I can see that this information has been input here in my form. I selected this earlier and so typically your form will show up empty but mine shows up like this. Now this is not what it's going to look like on your phone obviously but this just shows you that because we're using the appropriate data type then we're already going to box our users into what they can submit in this property. So they can choose your date and they can choose a time here. Same thing with our date property, except for you can only choose the date. That's why it's important to choose the correct data type for what type of information you want to collect from your users. Next, we have our image property. Our image property data type can hold image files like your JPEG or your PNG or a GIF. It doesn't accept the HEIC file type that comes from iPhones or SVGs, which is a graphic file. It does have a file size limit of 50 megabytes. And one thing to know about the images that are uploaded into the database is there is no way to manipulate them from the database itself. For data that's stored in an image property, you must choose the image component or a list that displays images to show what's in the database. However, with a text field, you can display the URL to the image, which is created for you when you store an image. So let's look at what that looks like. Here, inside this simple list, you can see that in the left section of the simple list, we're using an image and we're pulling that image from the current data type record and the image property. However, if we were to put information here inside the subtitle, about the image, I can choose information from the image and that's my URL. I can't actually display the image here inside this magic text property because it doesn't accept images. To go ahead and see what this looks like, you can see my images are here and my image URL shows up here. All right, next we're gonna look at the file data type. The file data type can hold files. It can hold image files like a JPEG or a PNG, but it can also hold audio files, video files, GIFs, PDFs, docs, a whole bunch of things. It cannot store CSVs or number files. This is not an exhaustive list of formats, but you can definitely get an understanding of what's possible. Just like our image data type, the file size limit also is 50 megabytes. If you notice, the file data type can hold image files. However, you will not be able to display those images inside your app. For example, if we come over here to our simple list and we know that this accepts images, and we also know that inside the database I placed file types that were images, I can go ahead into my left section, but there's no way for me to actually choose my file because it is not recognized as an image, even though it is an image. Through our text property inside of our app, we can go ahead and select very specific things about our file type. We've got our file name, the URL, and the size of the file that can be displayed. In order to utilize files within your app, you'll need to use a specific component, specifically the audio player or video player to play movies or audio. Similarly, we do have a PDF component that you can utilize and that will display PDF information. Let's talk about one more data type that we've not covered yet. It is our password field. Our password field is an encrypted data type, which means that the information is not accessible to the app's creator or even to Adalo employees, really anybody. This field is not available when making your app. Instead, it comes pre-baked into your user's collection. So for example, I can't choose a password field here, but you will see that I have a password field inside my user collection, and this is how information is displayed here. First, 
It tells you that my password is hidden, but even when you cl click into my user, you can see I don't have a password here. That's because this is an encrypted field. All right, those are all the data types that I'm going to talk about today. If you have any questions about anything that I went over, please let me know in the comments and I will respond as soon as possible. But otherwise, be on the lookout for videos about location and also our relationship properties. Thank you.